So I'm gonna share with you my best kept secret for the most amazing cornbread in the world. Are you ready? miracle. Uh, it's only 4.30 in the afternoon and I'm already starting dinner. Sometimes these days just go by so fast and all of a sudden it's dark and almost 7 o'clock and we haven't eaten yet and so I scramble around trying to find something to make for dinner. Uh, but today I am working ahead of the game and we're going to be making a couple really great recipes the biggest surprise today is that I'm gonna share with you my cornbread recipe. It's really special to me because actually everybody that eats it thinks it's just fantastic. I've actually won a cornbread contest with this recipe and I'm gonna share with you today the secrets that I think make an extra special cornbread. Along with cornbread, the main meal tonight is going to be a squash chicken chili. I know it might sound strange, it's a modified version of a pumpkin chicken chili that I've made in the past, um, but we're gonna use as many things as we, as we have available on the homestead, things that we have raised in the garden and meat, uh, and I'm gonna show you uh, that recipe tonight. So I'm gonna share with you my best kept secret for the most amazing cornbread in the world. That is home ground corn into cornmeal and actually I grind it down even farther into like a bread flour so that it's not really dense. It's kind of light and fluffy when you use it in a cornbread recipe. And the reason that I think that home ground corn makes such a difference is that the flavor is so intense. When you buy cornmeal or uh, other ground corn products at the grocery store, in most cases the corn oil has been extracted, separated, and you know used as corn oil to be sold in the grocery store. But when you do it at home in a grain mill, you actually keep all of those oils and all of those flavors, and I really am convinced that that is the difference between maybe a good or a mediocre cornbread and an exceptional cornbread. We've had our grain mill for maybe four or five years already. Uh, we do really like it, it's called a Wonder Mill. And we got the idea to use the Wonder Mill from a video a long, long time ago when we were first starting to homestead and dreaming about moving out into the country. We saw a video from an American homestead when they were just first starting out. Uh, you know what, you guys? They were actually one of our very first inspirations, not only to homestead, but to go on this YouTube journey. And we are forever grateful to them for inspiring us. If you are uh, interested in learning more about the Wonder Mill Grain Mill, we don't have an affiliation with them. They don't sell on Amazon, but uh, we will leave a link to their website in the description of this video. Today I'm actually making two cornbreads because the kids just got home from school and they're hungry and there's no way that if I only make one that it will actually make it until dinner. They're probably gonna devour half of a pan of cornbread just because they're hungry and it smells so good. So uh, I'm just gonna get started and make some homemade cornbread. Okay, now we're making two cornbreads, so I'm doubling the recipe. So we're gonna start off with two cups of our freshly ground corn flour. And we're gonna add two cups of all-purpose flour. Now, the corn is organic, so which means it's also non-GMO corn. We're also using organic 
all-purpose flour, two cups, one. We're gonna add two tablespoons of baking powder. A lot of times baking powder is kind of chunky and I'm not sure if that's because of the humidity here, but I always sift it through a sieve to make sure that I don't get a big chunk of baking powder when I'm eating the cornbread. We're gonna add one teaspoon of salt. I'm using pink Himalayan salt. And we like sweet cornbread. A lot of people don't, it's just a preference. I'm gonna add two thirds cup of sugar for the two cornbreads. We use cane sugar. Cane sugar is a non-GMO sugar. Whereas regular sugar is generally beet sugar, which is GMO. So this is uh, cane sugar. It's actually from uh, C&H sugar. We're just gonna mix this together, all the dry ingredients. And then we're gonna move on to the wet ingredients. So for the wet ingredients, we're gonna start with four eggs. We're gonna mix these up. And I'm gonna add in the oil right now because I like for the oil and the eggs to kind of emulsify before I add any of the other ingredients. And now we're gonna add two cups of milk. Now let me tell you a little bit about um, raw milk. We use raw goat's milk around here and raw milk doesn't really ever spoil like pasteurized milk. Raw milk just kind of turns different degrees of sour. So if you have some sour milk on your homestead, things like cornbread are a perfect way to use it up without tasting the difference between really fresh milk and sour milk. So two cups of milk. And in this case, this is a little sour. A lot of old recipes call for sour milk. And these days, when you see a recipe that calls for sour milk, they give you instructions how to sour pasteurized milk by adding lemon juice or vinegar. But this is the original way. This is real sour milk. Okay, this is all combined in here. And so we're just going to combine that in with the dry ingredients and mix it all up. This is ready to pour into our pans. Today I'm gonna to use two round cake pans. Uh, sometimes I use cast iron. Today I'm gonna to use just round cake pans. Uh, it's a perfect amount to have these two cornbreads in. Okay, here are my two circular cake pans. I do have them both oiled and I have preheated the oven to 400 degrees. So we're just going to split these two Hopefully, get the same amount of batter in each one. And we're gonna bake these for about 20 to 25 minutes. Look at these gorgeous cornbreads. I just love to make cornbread. They are so pretty and so tasty. 
I'm gonna let these cool a little bit and then I'm gonna flip them out onto plates and the girls can have some for a snack while we wait for the rest to have with dinner. Let's get these cornbreads out. They look pretty amazing. on this chili for dinner. We're gonna start by adding just two tablespoons of sunflower oil to the bottom of our soup pot because I'm going to start cooking down some green peppers and onions. Now the recipe calls for a medium green pepper and a medium onion, but we grew onions and green peppers in the garden and I have diced them and frozen them. So I'm just gonna add what I think looks like a medium pepper and a medium onion and we're going to cook them down for a little bit until they're soft before adding more ingredients. So I just put about three cloves of garlic in there. We're just going to mix it around just real quick, bring out those flavors and then I'm going to start adding some of the liquids. I'm going to start with one jar of diced tomatoes from the garden. I'm not going to strain it out the liquid. I'm just going to add it right in. Three cups of poultry broth. Now a quart is about four cups. So I'm going to measure out three cups. And the rest of it I will just drink tonight after dinner. Three cups of chicken broth. The original recipe for this calls for one can of pumpkin puree, like you would get from the store to make a pumpkin pie. But I'm actually gonna substitute my canned butternut squash, which I have canned in cubes from last year. So I'm just gonna drain out the liquid into another jar so I can save it and use it in like a vegetable soup or something. And then I'm gonna mash it up so that basically I'm starting with the same thing as a can of pureed pumpkin. Now I want to talk with you a little bit about this jar opener that I have. I used this on one of my other videos and golly I've had so many questions about it. So I want to talk with you a little bit about it. It was actually a gift from one of our subscribers, Cynthia Fisher, and it's actually an original from the 40s and 50s, but it was still brand new. So it actually came in a package, uh, kind of, you know, like that. And it's called Pryalid. I'm not sure if you can find this anywhere. So many people have said, gosh, I've looked everywhere and I can't find anything like it. So now you know what this is, what I've been using. It's so handy. And this is a perfect way to get your lids off that uh, doesn't damage them at all. So moving on, I'm going to dump these into a bowl and I'm going to use a potato masher to mash them up. I'm going to add in that butternut squash puree. Let's stir that up and see what it's starting to look like starting to look pretty good. Now over here in this pot I've been cooking black beans all day long and I need about four cups of them. So I'm gonna start pulling that out and measuring and putting it into the soup. We do not buy canned beans anymore. We just buy them in bulk, dry, and then I cook them as we need them. You know, I need to can some beans this winter before things get so busy in the summer because they're really nice to have on hand. Okay. Okay, it's time to put some meat in this soup. We're actually gonna use chicken. You can also use turkey. Uh, this is two cups of chicken that I had in the freezer from a different time that I made chicken and had leftovers. I just stuck it in the freezer so that I could use it again 
it really is, it could probably go in there as is, but I'm just gonna chop it up a little bit so that it's kind of more in bite-sized pieces in the soup I'm making or the chili. I'm just rough cutting it. Two cups, two and a half cups is definitely plenty. Okay, let's start seasoning up this soup. We're gonna start with dry parsley. And I have some actually that we grew. I'm just going to cut it. I need two teaspoons, so I'm just gonna kinda of wing it. I love to just wing it. The next thing is two teaspoons of chili powder, but I actually just kinda of make my own chili powder. So you're gonna get a little bit of another secret. So I'm going to put one teaspoon of home ground and home grown paprika, half of a teaspoon of ground powdered poblano peppers, and half of a teaspoon of the Monero chili pepper. Now when I make chili powder, it has more ingredients than that, but this recipe calls for extra of those other ingredients. So we're gonna also put in one and a half teaspoons of cumin. I love cumin. It tastes so Mexican, Hispanic, and that's probably one of the favorite types of foods for me. And we're gonna put in also one and a half teaspoons of oregano, and a half teaspoon of salt. We're using pink Himalayan salt. Everything that we need in this chili is in there. So I'm just gonna put the lid on and turn it down to low. And I'm just gonna let that cook for about 30 minutes. The chili is ready and it smells so amazing. I can't wait to dish this up for the family. So let's put some in the bowl. Man, that looks so good. We're gonna top this off with a little bit of homemade yogurt, and plain yogurt instead of sour cream. Some cheddar cheese. and some of my homemade sriracha sauce. And we cannot forget about a wonderful piece of homemade cornbread. That looks like an amazing dinner. So I hope all of this seems easy enough for you to try. I guarantee you will love it. Hey, and now my secrets are out for what makes my cornbread taste so amazing. I hope you try it. You guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and spending time with me as I'm making dinner for the family. I hope you're enjoying our channel. And if you would subscribe, we would really appreciate it. Don't forget to check us out on all of our social media, including Instagram. And until next time, thank you so much for stopping by the homestead. Take care and God bless.